Today to my right we have Mr. Alex. <laughs> so Alex, so a uh, musician, and uh, we've known each other a long time now. We're both from Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, come up in similar scenes. So uh, what's going on with you right now? What kind of projects are you working on? Uh, focusing mainly on solo stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah, unfortunately, rusty things yes. we love. Yes, but... uh, we're on a, a breakup, maybe hiatus thing. We'll see mm -hmm. where that goes. But uh, for now, yeah, focusing on the, the solo stuff. Well, you got anything coming out? We'd love to have it on. Uh, I've been working on it, so I'll be in touch. Look forward to it. So uh, I brought you on not only because you're an amazing musician and a super nice guy, but I also brought you on because you do something very interesting to me. You started doing your own. I mean, you've been doing this for uh, how long now? My whole life. Your whole life you've I'm been doing technically this. Technically, you could call it fourth generation. Fourth generation. So... Alex is a beekeeper, apiarist, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's the more professional term. I'm not a stickler for terminology. You're not a stickler for terminology. Fair enough. Um, but either way, so so tell me a little bit about how you got into, um, you know, apiaries. And like you said, it's a family thing. Yeah. Well, like my great-grandfather used to do it over in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, then when the family came over in the 40s or whatever, just kept it going. Uh, my grandfather didn't really want anything to do with it, but my dad was really into it. So wow. he's been doing it his whole life and then, you know. Just by, it's been my whole life. So well, that's cool, and especially like raising bees is like one of the big problems out there. Like yeah, if we don't have bees to pollinate, it, yeah. you know, you're the one creating them. Uh, so that's great. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming Thanks in, for Alex. Um, so we got a little bit of video later. We'll show mm -hmm. boost. So then we take the feeder off, and here we go. This is basically it. Um, these are called cranes. And that's where all the work's really being done. Now, yesterday I took out some frames because they were full of honey. Started the harvest process. But normally these, there would be about nine or ten of these in here. Now, inside here, this is where you see the honeycomb. When we put these in, there's a flat sheet of wax in there, and then they draw out that hexagonal pattern on their own. And in each one of those cells is where they put the honey or babies or pollen or even water sometimes and that's where they do all their all all everything basically that's that's the gist of it it's a very simple very straightforward process it's just you know there's a lot of them so what would be a small thing maybe someone could take away from what you do and what would be a piece of advice you'd give someone starting out or trying to get in sort of farming and growing their own food we can start with uh we can start with you alex um the biggest thing is like try not get discouraged when things don't go your way because you're basically manipulating nature yeah like yeah. i'm trying to tell a hundred thousand bees what to do <laughs> and it doesn't always work um and sometimes they fight you back yeah so, yeah um there's a lot of times where you're like all that work and that but you know you just keep going at it you try your best and you eventually odds are it's going to keep going if you keep